And the people are all freaking out. It's almost like they are in love with us. Mm -hmm. right? <coughs> you can't see him. And yet you can see the people are genuine. Or they all deluded. So they call him the Lion of Judah, right? Mm -hmm. and they call him the Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. It's like a heavy contrast. You know, if you don't picture a lion and a lamb in the same person, do you? Mm -hmm. Not much. So that's the title of my message. And it's not long, it's not actually a sermon, it's just something that I'd like to, to get you thinking of. About who Jesus actually is, because Jesus is different to every single person, isn't it? My Jesus. It's the same Jesus that you believe in, but he's <coughs> is a different relationship with you than he has with me, isn't it? There's no formula, if I can put it that way, on how to have a relationship with somebody, is it? I mean, I can't give you advice on how to, to have a relationship with a chick, can I? I can tell you what she likes and what she doesn't like in general, but I mean, you've got to work it out yourself. With fear and trembling. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's start out with the Re Revelations 5. So I've got, the, I've got seven scriptures here tonight that we're just going to look at quickly. And hopefully you guys can write them down and go and meditate on these scriptures. Go and read them for yourselves. It's just Meditate on who Jesus actually is. Because we, we've got a lot of stereotypes of who he is. Isn't it? I've heard a lot about who he is. But I can be myself. I have experienced a lot of what I've heard about him. And I'd like to know who he is, not hear about who he is. Alright? Because that's the difference between religion and having the Holy Spirit in you, is it not? That you have a relationship. That you find out for yourself who this person is. Isn't it? Otherwise, it's, it, it's just a, a, a set of, a book of laws that you've got to keep. Out of fear that one day you're going to be judged. <coughs> who, who enjoys being bad? <coughs> Are you guys with me? Anybody alive out there? Yes. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> All right, Revelations 5, verse 4 and 5 says, Am I in the right one now? Yes. Revelations 5, <coughs> verse 4 and 5 says, So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. Verse 9. <coughs> and they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and you have redeemed us to God by your blood. <coughs> Out of every tribe, every tongue, and people, and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Lion. The lion. The power. Only the blood of Christ, which was perfect, could redeem man. Otherwise God would have probably used a man, if it was possible. But there is no perfect man. So he had to send his own son, who is holy, to go through a life, just like us, in the flesh, being tempted in every point as we are, and coming through it without sin. That's the only thing that could set us right with God. <coughs> so, in other words, he was a champion for us, where we couldn't, we couldn't overcome, we could be a champion, he became our champion, isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a big brother, I smile. my champion is there for me, and doing whatever it takes to pull me up, to pull me through, that's love. Isn't it? Very cool, isn't it? John 1 29. You guys say Amen on my sword, please. Amen. 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 
29, the next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. <coughs> now if you think of a lamb, what do you think of? You think of something that's pretty weak. Eh? Mm -hmm. you know, it just like follows the others in there. If it steps in a hole or breaks its leg, you've got to kill it because you can't grow it back again. You can't put it in a spoon. Yeah. It's like a docile animal, isn't it? And yet, Jesus says, My sheep know my voice. So we sheep. <laughs> Thoughts. <so>. Eh? <laughs> it's like the weakest of animals, isn't it? It doesn't defend itself. It's, if the lion comes at it, it just stands there. <coughs> it doesn't run away or anything. It's just like, <laughs> eat me, eat me. <laughs> isn't it? Mm -hmm. eh? Like the weakest of animals. Not, and and now why would they call Jesus the lamb? Is it just a picture because of the lambs that you used to sacrifice? Why didn't they then call him an ox? You know, because they sacrificed cattle there as well. So surely there must be more to the meaning of lamb. Depicting that even in his weakness he's stronger than us. In his weakest moment, isn't it? As a lamb. I think it's a picture of Jesus humbling himself before the Father and just doing what the Father wanted, not what he wanted. Because he does say, if you do not become as little children, you will not even see the kingdom of heaven. If you don't come as, become as little children, little children are weak. I mean, they run up to a stranger, you know. To them, everybody's good, isn't it? Mm. So you see the contrast there. The overcomer, and yet he's also the lamb, completely under the influence of the Father. That's love. <coughs> Doesn't love have two sides? It's both strong and weak. Eh? So I'm just showing you the contrast here tonight. Uh, 1 John 2, little John 2, 1 and 2, I'll read it for you. You don't have to go there. <coughs> <coughs> it says there, My little children, these things are right to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And He Himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Now, how is it possible that a lamb, docile, humble, led to the slaughter, could gain that much power? That he could save every single person. <coughs> hey? That's an amazing thing, isn't it? Isn't that wisdom? I mean, everybody looked at Jesus on the stations of the cross, <coughs> going to, to be crucified, and said, Yes, like, check how weak this is. He said he's the Son of God. So why didn't he call angels down to come? These people are slapping him, you know, pulling his beard out, mocking him. See what I'm saying? Isn't that that's like weak if you look at it in the flesh? And yet in that weakness is where the strength would be lay. <coughs> in that weakness lay yours and my redemption. Being right before God. As if we'd never sinned. That's an amazing thing to meditate on. That's the wisdom of God. Because my wisdom says, <coughs> what kind? Mm -hmm. What kind? You say you're the son of God, what, why are you letting these people who hit you and carry on? Doesn't make any sense to the flesh, does it? Does it? Mm. <coughs> That's my wisdom. So my wisdom is actually nothing in God's eyes. It says all knowledge will pass away because it's <coughs> inferior to my knowledge. You know. I can't even make a blade of grass grow. So what knowledge do I actually have? How wise am I actually? And yet, the contrast is in one person, Jude. He's the lion and he's the lamb. 
amazing, yeah? Mm -hmm. Amazing. That's, I think that's perfect control. I mean, he's got all the power in the world to speak worlds into existence and storms, <laughs> you know, oxygen and whatever that you can see and that you can't see. <coughs> speak it with that power, and yet he's, he's willing to hold that power in for you and I. Because he loves us that much. Sure. Hey, it's my mind mm -hmm. If you sit and meditate on it, it's actually like, whoa, whoa. I thought I knew Jesus. Mm -hmm. I haven't a clue. I haven't a clue. That's why I'm against formulas. Because as far as I'm concerned, that's putting him in a box. He's too big to put in a box and say, if I do this, he will do this. Isn't it? It sounds to me almost like a slot machine. If I put a coin in, it's got to give me a chocolate. I think he's a much bigger than that. I think he knows the thoughts and the intents of your heart. He knows the desires of your heart. He says, I will give them to you. I will make even your enemies be at peace with you. Wow. Who can do that? He's a little bit bigger than what we'd like to... Because we'd like to put in a while. It gives us a comfort zone. One of the person is like that, and I put them there. And I don't know if okay, he's like that, she's like that. God says, don't even make an image of me because you're making me small. Because you're making me small. I mean, come now. If the earth is his footstool, well, how big is he? If he measures the heavens with the palm of his hand. I mean, where do they start and where do they end? This is the God who died for me because he loves me. That's an amazing thing. Why would he even bother? Why would he even bother with me? And yet he does. He does. Isn't that an amazing thing? Mm. I, I, I don't know any other religion that has a God like my God. I don't. I don't have to work to get his good books. He already loves me. I don't have to work to please him so that he can bless me because he just blessed me anyway. <coughs> and he's just, <coughs> he's just blessed me. I'm in school. One-one situation, eh? So, in 1 John 2, he's an advocate for us. What does an advocate do? He sits there and he pleads your case for you. He says, Father Norman, I died for his sins. I carried them. I became his sin for him. Look at him through my blood. He's pure. And he pleads his case for him every time. All the time. 24-7. He took his blood and he sprinkled it on the mercy seat and he sat down in that mercy seat with the Lord as a reminder to the Father. Father, I did your will because I love you and I love them. Forgive them. Not that God's ever going to forget, will he? I mean, God's not forgetful God. But Jesus is there pleading your case anyway. Anyway, forgive, 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 forgive. That is your advocate, the liar. The liar. This is supposed to be a good message. She flies out of the cliff. You look like you're going to die. <laughs> All right, uh, let's have a look at Matthew 26, 67. I'll read it for you quick. Matthew 26, 67. Then they spat in his face and beat him, and the others struck him with the palms of their hands. Saint prophesied to us. <coughs> Who's the one who struck you? Why would he go through all of that, do you think? 
Number one, to be tempted to become not perfect, right? Number two, it's to relate to you. Isn't it? <coughs> Who here has ever been mocked? He went through it, so he can relate to you. So when you go, go to him now that you're born again, you go to him and you turn to him and say, yes, I, this is not lacking. He can relate to you and comfort you because he's been through it and he knows what it's like. He's not some God who's sitting up there and can't relate to you. He became like you. So that you can be one-on-one -on -one with him in the real. Isn't that cool? Who yeah. has had somebody spit in their face? Yeah. Eh? Yeah. Yes, I don't think I'd handle that very well. Mm -hmm. eh? I'm not quite honest. I don't think I'd handle that very well. I might just uh, lose a lot of for the Lord. And, and give him a bit of the five-fold ministry. <laughs> <laughs> it's done for you. It's done for you. So mm -hmm. for everybody who has had it done to them, you can relate to those people in that situation. Because he's not a God who's up there. He's a God who's right here. <coughs> right here with me. Every single day, his name is faithful and true. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Your mother and your father may leave and forsake you, but I will never do so. He became our humiliation because he loves us. Because he loves us. He's prepared to do it. He's prepared to take that spit in the face and not hate and not condemn and not get offensed, take offense. Not sin. On your bill? Wow. That's a big brute I like. That's a big brute who really cares for me. So who is this Jesus is the question. Who is this Jesus that loves me so much? So he's a lion as a champion and an advocate, <coughs> and he's a lamb as a weak on our behalf because he loves us and became a humiliation for on our behalf because he loves us. Same person. Totally weird. Totally mind boggling. I don't know anybody who's like this. This is why I, was, I worship him because he's okay. He's amazing. He's mind boggling. Isn't it? Revelation 117 says this. <coughs> and when I saw him, I felt that he was <coughs> like I was dead. Oh. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives. And was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I have the keys of Hades and of hell. The lion, <coughs> in his weakness, he became strong. He took the keys from Satan's hand for death, so that he wasn't anymore in charge of death. In other words, when you die, you can have eternal life. You don't have to be separated from God forever. That's it. <coughs> so he's a soldier and an overcomer on our behalf mm -hmm. as the lion. That's an amazing thing, but in his weakness he could do this. His weakness is so much more than our strongest day mm -hmm. on earth. We cannot do this. Liar. Okay, the last one for the Lamb is Luke 22. Verse 42. It says, Father, if it's your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him, and being in agony. <coughs> He prayed more earnestly, and then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. The lamb, at his very weakest, <coughs> at his very weakest moment. Now, this has been proven by doctors that in great anguish, you can sweat blood. 
from your forehead. But you will be in huge anguish. So who here has been anxious? <coughs> who here has been in a, a, a feeling of hopelessness? Fear. Depression. You have to go through those things. If he's going to relate to you in that situation, in all those negative emotions, <coughs> you have to go through that and still not sin. In other words, you have to go through that and not turn his back on God and think, um, or, or start thinking to himself that God won't come through for him. Mm. In other words, he, didn't sin. he knew that his God would come through for him one way or another. But for the first time in eternity, from everlasting to eternal, he was going to be separated from his father. Because God cannot look on evil, the heavens were shut when he died. Right? And there was that earthquake. And the earth went dark for three hours. God shut the windows of heaven and says, He could not look on the evil that was being done to a holy person. Because he loves you. In that weakness, in that weakness, is where you and I got saved. Right there, because he says, your name was inscribed in the palm of my hands when those nails were being written. Your name was inscribed there. In his moment of weakness, you became strong. Because you can receive eternal life in that moment of reason. This is the wisdom of God. You just, I just, it's just <laughs> beyond my comprehension. How a person in his weakest, weakest moment can be so powerful that he can save anybody who believes on his name. Mm. It's an amazing thing. Alright, my last scripture for the evening, 2 Corinthians 12. <coughs> Verse 9. <coughs> the lion and the lamb. You've heard the scripture that God resists the proud, eh? It says, humble yourself many times in the Bible. Eh? 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. He said to me, My grace is enough or sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. God's strength is made perfect in weakness. That goes against the grain. Eh? Who of us here wants to look like a weakling? <laughs> Not one. Isn't it? That is why he says the flesh it resists the spirit. Because the spirit says, be weak and God will be strong in you. The flesh says, be strong and don't show any weakness. That's pride. And God resists it. Heavy, eh? Then Paul says in verse 10, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, when I'm in need, or in persecution, when I'm distressed, for Christ's sake, for when I'm weak, then I am strong. Because when I am weak, He can be strong in me, and He can get glory through me. That's exactly the example that Jesus gave us. He did the will of the Father, and became weak. Strength of the Father whose love for you is all-encompassing and everlasting, could come through and save you. Isn't that a beautiful... Who? Do you know anybody? Anybody who would just die for you in the flesh? No. That's, that's who Jesus is. The lion and the lamb. Giving you something to think about. Mm,